can't get this incident out of my head. It's like when you have a song stuck in your head so you sing it. That is what I'm about to tell you, except the song is a moment. On Tuesday, I went to the beach and it was just a delicious beach day. The ocean waves were clapping, the sun was shining, everyone was smiling. Usually when I leave the beach, I take the ferry home because it is beautiful. So I'm on the ferry top deck and I see this woman essentially push a man out of his seat. She sits down next to him and kind of like pushes him over and then her mother or older friend sits down and the guy sits one row ahead with the woman that he was with. The woman that he was with was a little upset, you could tell, and she was kind of just letting the two women know, hey, that wasn't cool, that wasn't very nice what you did. She was essentially just defending the man who was kicked out of his seat, but she did it in a cool way. I became enraged. I take my little stoned ass downstairs and I write a two-page, relax, it was on receipt paper, note about how wrong the women behind them were. I write all this stuff about the importance of good karma and how I knew something wonderful would happen to them this week. Don't let those bitches get you down. You know, a totally normal thing that you would do too. My plan was to give it to them at the end of the ferry ride, but the plan changed because after the two mean women left the boat, the man who was bullied got up to take a picture. The woman he was with was behind this wholesome photo shoot. This was my moment. Would you like me to get a picture of the two of you? That would be great. Thank you so much. I got them taking pictures with their hands in the air. Vogue, Vogue, strike a pose. You're doing amazing, sweetie. When I finished my David LaChapelle reenactment, I handed her her phone and the note. I was going to give you this when I got off the boat, but I wrote you a note. I saw how those women treated you too. I believe in good energy and you really didn't deserve that. Read it when you get off the boat. She looked at me in my eyes, asked me my name and said, I love you, Rocky. And I said, I love you too. Wow, what a moment. I'm smiling at the water like I'm a walking aura healer. And then I hear, Rocky, I turn around, it's the woman again. Can you take another picture of us? Your finger was in every shot. I try to play it cool, like, uh, hey, remember the note I wrote you and you're criticizing my photography? Is not what I thought, you sickos. I was graceful and I said, oh, what a klutz. I'd be happy to retake, of course, of course, of course. Smile again, you two. Rocky, your finger's still on the lens. Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello! Did you have an amazing week? I had a very fun week. Is it getting colder and I hate that? Of course! But I'm trying to take a very positive outlook. Don't cry because it happened. Smile because it happened. Right? Fact check that, Monica. I don't know the quote. Just the sentiment. Speaking of fact check, I need to amend and acknowledge something I said during the Caitlyn Bits of Guy episode. I called Game of Thrones a period piece. Apparently it can't be a period piece because dragons aren't real. I'm not a period piece expert. A crazed fan found me on the street of our shared kitchen, laughed in my face, Names were thrown my way, and he shook the shame maraca at me over and over. Whatever, we don't know 100% that there weren't dragons in periods of time. But I'm open to learning. Every month, me and friend of the pod, Isabel, treat ourselves to dirty martinis at this fancy restaurant downtown. We had the same bartenders as last time, and they remembered us. It was practically cheers up in that bitch. Since we made the decision that we were going to have a night, we left our fancy dirty martini spot and went to grab a beer while we were killing some time waiting for her boyfriend and his friend to leave the spot they were at. The plan was to link up. We killed the perfect amount of time, and at last, we were headed their way. Bars in New York City are supposed to check if you're vaxxed. 
This is good. We want that. By the way, if anyone who isn't vaxxed wants to have a conversation on why you should be vaxxed, I can explain virus mutation to you. Just don't ask me to take your picture. I'll do it over Zoom though because ugh, get vaccinated. So we're outside the next bar with the boys showing our vaccination proof and the bouncer hears me say, I gotta find my license. He says, I don't need your license. Right, but I do. He doesn't know about my Black Crows concert trauma or he would uh, shut the fuck up. Just go inside, I don't need your ID. My guy, I get it. I look over 21, you've made your point. I'm not Leslie Mann and you're not Craig Robinson, so let's not act out this doorman, doorman, doorman fantasy. I didn't say that, but could you imagine? We get inside, merriment ensues, and who walks in? Our dirty martini bartender friends. We weren't even that close to their job. I mean, of all the gin joints, the world is so small. That brings us to Rocky's highest thoughts, my most stoned thoughts of the week. Number one, pictures are what's happening on the outside. Paintings are what's happening on the inside. Number two, I texted myself, Saved by the Bell Christmas special. Don't you just wish that happened to you? Don't know what that means, but God bless us, everyone. Number three, is wanting to bang dudes who are bros a fetish. Number four. Number four was an event. I was smoking a joint with my friend by the water under a bridge because I'm a marijuana troll, bitch. Answer these riddles three. Where does an untrained backflipper come to practice for the Death Olympics? Correct. The concrete table directly behind us. Does he do over 10 backflips, giving us cause to believe we might be interviewed for the six o'clock news? Correct again. You bet your sweet ass he does. Last one, and if you get this right, you can cross my troll bridge. Was he Caucasian? Looks like you're crossing my bridge, friend. My guest this week is stand-up comedian, podcast host, and hilarious gem on the earth, Ashlyn Salzano. Ashlyn's wild word was brother, and she shares an absolutely raucous story involving them both. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Feel free to write a review on Apple Podcasts, and thank you to those of you who have done so already. I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Wild Nights with Rocky, on Twitter at Wild Nights Pod. I'm on YouTube, where you can watch extended interviews with my guest and see our little faces. Sweet little Megan, I love you and I'm proud of you. And now, please enjoy my Wild Nights conversation with Ashlyn Salzano. Ashlyn, welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No, I I am so excited to have you on. I saw you a few weeks ago at Barely Making It, the comedy show in Brooklyn uh, hosted by Megan O'Malley. Shout out to Megan O'Malley. (laughs) And I said, that girl, I mean, I was pissing myself. You were so (laughs) fucking funny and just such a standout. So this is um, my pleasure to have you on here. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, a lot of people are like, yeah, you you know, you were so, but the audience is just as important to a comedy show. So you and your friend were laughing and you and your (laughs) friend were also like listening. So thank you guys for coming to the show. It is, it is. It's a very uh, reciprocated relationship. You need to reciprocate when you're watching a comedy show. So I, um, I very much loved that show. So anyone who can go out to barely making it go yeah it's a great show and it's free and it's free um and it's on a rooftop and it's on a rooftop soak in the last of the summer days how how is your end of summer wrap up how are you feeling I'm gonna be honest Rocky it's been bad it's been bad okay let's get honest (laughs) this this weather is horrible yeah when did we become Florida I know like we're in New York when did we become Florida like I, I I didn't sign up for this you know what I mean it's raining almost every other day it's terrible. One of my girlfriends last night sent me a, a video on Twitter of the FDR. The FDR was completely flooded. Yeah, yeah. This has happened. This has happened to me before, where I've had to cancel shows. Remember when we had that other hurricane or storm? Mm-hmm. Um, it was. It was like on a weekend too. It was like on a Thursday. I had to cancel a show because I live all the way uptown Manhattan, uh-huh. and everything was flooded. Like 
I, I usually drive to shows, but uh -huh. both highways were flooded. And then I was going to take the train and then the trains were flooded. I was like, this is a mess. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Like I saw cars like stuck in the water. I was like, oh my God, like, what are we going to do here? I said last night to some friends that they're going to have to make cars that double as boats. Yeah. <laughs> You know what yes, I mean? Yes, yes. They are going to yes. have to do that because honestly, and also I saw this tweet, but I had the thought first living in America. I, that happens. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, living in America is literally just deciding which natural disaster you can, uh, you know, put up with. Yeah, yeah, it, yes, yes. If you go to California, you got to deal with wildfires, Fires. right? Mm -hmm. Like now over here, you got to deal with floods. Like, Rocky, I don't know how to swim. I'm going to have to walk around with a life jacket from now on. Like, I know. I'm not a strong <laughs> swimmer either. I got yeah. chicken pox in first grade, so I couldn't complete my swim lessons. So now I kind of just dip my toes in. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, maybe you have a strong, you know, a family, a strong support system, some perhaps some siblings that can help you through the end of the world, maybe a <laughs> brother, perhaps. Yes. Yes. I mean, I don't, I doubt my brothers will help me though. They, they more like laugh. Like <laughs> one time I was on a, but I, I don't know if I'm like, it's, but one time I was on a banana boat with my brother uh -huh. and you know, you know, like sometimes when the boats are supposed to like, like make you flip over and you fall in the water and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. One time I was like holding on and I was asking my brother for help and he was just like laughing at me Rocky he was yeah. like he couldn't pick me up like he older was just or younger brother younger yeah yeah like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just Literally, laughing at me my brother just like 10 minutes before this podcast started punched me in my arm so uh <laughs> I feel your pain in a big way both uh physically and mentally so Ashlyn's <laughs> wild word was brother so Ashlyn, everyone is dying to know your wild night story. Give it to us. All right. So this involves actually the same brother who watched me on a banana boat and didn't <laughs> help me, like just laughed at me. And like, he, and after we got off the boat too, he was like, I'm sorry, Ash, you just look like the water was hitting your face. I'm like, you're not making it better. Like, no, stop, stop. No. Yeah. So my wild night, uh, my wild story with him is so we, we were going to Izu for his birthday, right? What is Izu? electric zoo oh i never heard the slang term and i'm honestly not even sure electric <laughs> zoo like what that is i know it's like probably a musical festival right yes yeah, so it's like um edm music like oh, club music okay, okay. yeah yeah it, they have they have them all over like a bunch of cities but this one is by uh randall's island okay in yes, new yes, york yes. Mm -hmm. so you have to like it's complicated to get to but it's really cool so mm. Uh, David Guetta performs there, you know, like the year we were going. So it was his birthday weekend and he didn't have anyone to go with. So he was like, please come with me. Please yeah. come with me. I'm like, you know, me and my brother are five years apart. So we're close, but uh -huh. sometimes I feel like I'm a little too old to be here. You know, <laughs> like yeah. sometimes I'm I get eight that years thing. older than my brother. So I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, I want to hang my other brother. I'm eight years older than <laughs> you want to hang with them. And you're like, but you're like, I can't do this anymore. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So, so I go to Izu with him. I'm like, fine, I'll go. Cause I like house music too. Uh -huh. I like EDM music. So we're at Izu. So, um, they're checking us in and, and I noticed that he's acting a little bit weird, but my brother is, he's not predictable. Like you either, you don't know what's going through his head or there is absolutely nothing going through his head. You gotcha. know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He doesn't, of, he doesn't show a po He's got a poker face. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but you don't know if it's really a poker face or if there's just nothing going on, you right. know? <laughs> <laughs> the li are the lights on up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's acting like a little bit weird, but I'm like, okay, whatever, like, let's, sh I'll, whatever. Yeah. It's his birthday. Maybe he's in his fields, right? We all get in our fields. Of course. So we get through security. We get through all of that, which was pretty intense security at Izu. So we're like hanging out. We get like a bottle of water. We get like a couple of bottles of water. Let Just me like ask, what year was this? 2014. Okay. Either 2014 or 2013. Okay. So yeah, security was probably a little bit stricter because now people are just sneaking in joints and stuff or whatever pills they want. But 2014, maybe a tiny bit stricter. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if you remember this, but a bunch of kids had like overdosed a year prior to that. Mm. Like- um, leaving Izu, like they found a couple of kids, like on the train, like yeah. 
they had overdose while they were at Izu. So it was a mess, right? So so we're we're there and we're like we're going to a stage you know all the good headliners like i said like david getta yeah. or like you know uh marshmallow or all of those people they usually perform at night yeah but it's a whole day situation like there's three tents and in three three different tents there's like three different djs at all time though. right right they're just like it goes down by popularity right right so the right, most right. popular goes up at night so we're you just gotta kind of around. pace yourself throughout the day. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Don't get too hype in the morning. Right, 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 right. So we're there and all of a sudden, you know, we're we're hanging out. He passes me his water. You know, I'm like, yeah, of course. I take a sip, Rocky, and it tastes like shit, like Uh-oh. pure, <laughs> pure shit. So I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, either the water at Izu needs to be like FDA approved. Right, right. <laughs> Or what's going on? So yeah. I look at my brother. I'm like, this water tastes like shit, doesn't it? And he goes, yeah, there's Molly in it. <gasps> I'm like, what? I was like, what? What? Do you, what? Like, bring it back. Bring it back. I'm like, what do you mean? There's. He's like, yeah, I put Molly in it. He's like, it's a little bit. Don't worry about it. And and in my head, right? Like, I, I was pissed because I had never done anything other than weed or. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like, I'm a pussy when it comes to drugs. You know what I mean? I stay in my little, you know, weed and liquor, you know, that's all I do. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the fuck? And then I I was kind of like panicking, but then I like had two thoughts at first. Right. I was like, okay, well, it's my brother. So I'm safe. Right. It's not like, it's not like I'm with some other dude who I don't know who I'm like, oh man, like this dude is trying to drug me. Right. Yeah. Or take advantage of me. Or is it really Molly? Yeah. Yes. So like, I, I feel safe. But then also I'm like, okay, I, there's also a fear of overdosing, right? But I'm also <laughs> like, if my brother overdoses and I don't, I feel like my parents are going to kill me. They're like, going to blame you. Know? you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I might as well do the drug with him. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. let's go down together. Yeah. So I was like, fine, whatever. So we, are, and my brother's like, he's, I don't want to say experienced in drugs, but mm-hmm. he is more, uh, he's not just like, some little kid who who's just like tries out drugs and stuff like that like I don't know he's oddly too educated about drugs he's a veteran of drugs yes one Mm -hmm. would say yeah served his time you know (laughs) but not it doesn't seem like I mean he definitely gave you drugs without your knowledge but it doesn't seem like he is uh, I don't want to make assumptions in a positive way but it seems like he knows what he's doing and he would have done that to you and he probably knows you well to know like she's never done molly before okay so he's yes you're, you're with a pro Right, right. And, and as we go, as we move on during the day, like he says little stuff that it makes me even feel more comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. So we're, so I'm like, okay, okay, like, I don't know what to expect. And like, you know, like you hear all this rumors about this drug, right? Uh-huh. Like, it, like, I remember hearing before, like that it made girls take their clothes off, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you hear like crazy shit like that. Yeah. And you're like, I don't want to take my clothes off at yeah. Izu, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I'm like, all right, just be chill. And honestly, I I didn't, it was one of those things that it like creeps up on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you've done Molly before. I don't know. I would say that me and your brother probably took the same classes at, <laughs> at Molly school. We probably took the same classes. I think I remember him. He sat in the you third remember? row. I was in the second row. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember him. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys graduated together. We graduated together. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I remember you, yeah. <laughs> but so so, oh my god so so it creeps up as you know and and then all of a sudden you feel like for me all I felt was energy and like I kind of felt zoned in to the music and maybe it was about like my surrounding right yeah because like that's a big part it is yeah because if maybe if I would have been like in a silent place I would have had too much time to think but like the music was just on. It was good. People around you are usually high at Izu. So mm-hmm. everyone is chilling and like, you know, you're the, the lights, you're getting like, oh, the lights. Like it's, yeah. it's, it was a good experience. I hate to say that. I'm not trying to promote drugs, but it was oh. a nice experience. I think that also, it's not that you're promoting drugs. I think there's a lot of, um, 
stigma around Molly and there's a lot of danger around Molly because it is cut with other things yes. if you don't know directly where the source is coming from or you don't have a drug testing kit or both because actually right. MDMA has been used uh, by therapists to help people get through PTSD specifically literal veterans like get through PTSD trauma from war and whatnot and so there is a big stigma on it it is a drug still um, under that umbrella, but it definitely, yeah. um, the government has stopped a lot of testing on it because it was more of a mind expanding drug rather than um, a detrimental drug, but it can be detrimental if cut poorly or used poorly. Right. Yeah. And then I think what happens is that, you know, you have a lot of people like that didn't go to school, like you and my brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they, they don't use it wisely or they uh -huh. don't do their research on it and then it gives it a bad rep because of it's course, like yeah any anything you do really that you do too much of is of really course. unhealthy you know what yeah. i mean even food you know yeah, it could be it could be unhealthy it's all so. addiction yeah yeah so you know i just remember like the lights just being more beautiful yeah <laughs> like, yeah and it was like have you ever been to like a, a ease like a kind of electric festival like electric music i haven't been to a big music festival on mdma i have been to a bar like clubs um, yeah like yeah. bell house is a big one to go to where there's like music i have been there and i've been to concerts on mushrooms so it's like i guess it's like kind of one in the same they're both mushrooms don't give you a, a hangover the next day but yeah so i can um definitely relate to like feeling the music and seeing it and being like oh my god i think this is the best day of my life yes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah you're like you're like where is all this happiness like yeah. where, regularly and then <laughs> these djs they you know because you they're not performers they're just like DJing so they need yeah. something to be like distracting like visually yes so they have like all these lights and they like do it so beautiful like it just like makes sense it goes with the music so I was just like in a trance I was like yes I'm feeling it and I'm dancing mm -hmm. I'm not taking my clothes off so no, I feel no, no. Your good clothes are staying yeah. on yeah yeah but you know what I did find weird that I had like the urge to smoke cigarettes Oh yeah, it def I always try to keep gum around if I'm doing okay. that because you want to chew and like the next day if you don't chew on something your cheeks will be raw. Yeah, yeah, because you're like chewing on your own cheeks. Did you get cigarettes? My brother had black and miles. Oh, <laughs> look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Getting prepared. <laughs> even though black and miles are kind of disgusting right, i don't know if, yeah i don't know in if the remember. moment though but you're like <laughs> in the moment works. it works yeah. yeah yeah did you feel a kind of love towards your brother were you like oh my god this like elevated our relationship oh yeah we have this like great picture of us uh -huh. where we're like hanging on to each other and we're just like <laughs> We're just like looking at the stage and like it's so cool because it's got like kind of like UV lights cut because we have we bought these glasses. It's yeah, we kind of bonded. I feel like that made us so much closer. Yeah. To, it was like just going and being in the same zone. But so we're like enjoying, right? Like we said, you got to pace yourself. So we're yeah. like enjoying the day. We move on to another tent. This tent is more like it's electric music. It's like EDM music, but it's rock EDM music. Mm hmm. So, which is something I didn't know existed until yeah. I went. Yeah. So it was like a closed off tent, right? So I'm kind of I'm like, oh, I don't really like it, but whatever. So we're we're hanging and people are starting to do like the the mosh pit, right? Like, oh da, like like yeah. banging into each other. And then all of a sudden, someone starts overdosing <gasps> right next to me and my brother. Oh and my we I, we're like, we're like freaking out. We're like, you you know. Uh, so, I'll, so I'll share this part. So during Izu, you see a lot of people with Ziploc bags. Okay. And they're, they have like Molly, but they have them um, loose, right? Like they have mm -hmm. like the whole powder, like loose. Yeah. My brother was putting them in capsules because mm -hmm. then he'll, he, that's how he was measuring it. Yeah. Like regulating how much he could take. Yeah, exactly. But so we saw this kid like pinching and taking, pinching and taking and then all of a sudden he's the kid that overdosed right. like that was overdosing so we're like watching him overdose and we're like help help like everyone's yelling help and because of 
the kids that have overdosed prior in Izu, they had like um like Narcon? these volunteers. Yeah, but they had these volunteers that had like red flags mm-hmm. and they were just like like you know all over the tent and they came like running like back to back and they were they were just like doing work on him and 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 because me and my brother were high we were like my brother looked at me he was like we gotta go to another tent like we gotta go now like we just we were like freaking out right yeah so we go to another tent and like I think my brother can see that like I'm kind of like oh man like am I overdosing now yeah it just puts you in that space because you're like oh I'm doing the same thing that kid was doing so my brother can kind of see that I'm like freaking out and so he like he's like he's like he's like yeah you know um you see that's why I don't do it like that that's why I don't put them in Ziploc bags because you pinch and you pinch and and you think you're taking a little bit but he's like but you're you're probably taking like four grams without even right. realizing it mm-hmm. he, he was like that's why I put ours in a capsule and then he explained it to me and then I was like man your class really worked <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I, I'm like man you are a great guy to be with right now yeah yeah because he you know he knew to not be like hey don't freak out like we're good because nobody yeah. wants to hear that when they're freaking out no but no, he no. he knew to inform me of like we're good because that kid was pinching yeah. and we have capsules. So he's like, I'm monitoring like how much we're taking. Yeah. So, you know, so he was like, it felt so good to be with him. I was like, okay. Right. You felt really <laughs> safe. Yeah. yeah. And then we continue to do Molly, of course. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Little, yeah. Little boosters. Yeah. Yeah. And we continued, we continued our night. And then like one of our, one of our friends met up with us and um, his his brother is autistic okay yeah his brother has Asperger's yes so we were like we were all four hanging out and um we're like you know me and my brother are still on drugs yeah and all of a sudden yeah all of a sudden my brother's friend's brother goes missing oh no yeah like in the middle of a crowd too because like if you want to see David Guetta, like you want to see him up front, you try to get to the front. Yeah. But there's no following people. Yes. Yeah. And you have to do like a line. You have to do like a line and hold on to each other and be like, we're going through here. We're going through there. So we were so deep in that we had to like get out and like find his brother. And like, (laughs) I have a cousin who's autistic too. So Uh like I, I kind of knew what we were dealing with, right? So right. we're like, we're like freaking out, and we're like, oh my god, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? We're trying to find him. And wait, and was the brother who was not missing? Was he also on Molly? No, no, he was okay. sober. He okay. was sober, but he's also, you know, he's lo- he's lost his brother, and then he's yeah. with two people who are high. So we're, we're just like, like, it's gonna be okay. We'll yeah. find him. I promise. Yeah, I'm sure you loved felt- hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> he's good I'm sure he's good like he's not in danger here yeah but it's also like I feel like people people on drugs were either two things were either super chill Mm -hmm. or super paranoid right like there's no in between absolutely not so so we got to the paranoid state and we're like looking for him looking for him looking for him and we're like we're like even asking people like hey did you see a, a kid with he had like a kiss shirt and we were like did you see a kid with a kiss shirt and all of that and then finally we find him like by the ice cream shop like the mm-hmm. ice cream tent that they had and we're like where are you where were you where were you and he was like he was he was like what's your problem like I can go wherever I want but you know he's yeah we're scared for him and he's probably not even scared yeah he's like i was gonna come back and find you guys and bring you ice cream now you're yeah getting ice cream. yeah and he's like pissed you know he's like pissed yeah. that we're even like treating him like that but so we don't go back into the to like the, the where everyone is right like right. i don't want to say seats because there's no seats here but the main tent maybe yeah so we don't go back in we just start like sitting like you know you can sit like in the middle far away from the dj there's like a big space where people are just hanging out so we just start like hanging out and we were like sitting by grass and i remember just like touching the grass like mm. non-stop and it felt like so soothing i was like wow yeah. like i have never been in love with earth this much yeah and i was like wow how is sh- how how shitty is it that we have to be on molly or MDMA to appreciate life like this, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
like it was so it was so weird so anyway so that happens I don't so I had plans to go out because it was Labor Day weekend so I had plans to like go with a bunch of friends to Newport Mm -hmm. in New York so I didn't go to Izu the next day but that night while we were traveling like on the train I couldn't like stay still yeah, you wanted to move and pace. And- I was like dancing to no music on the train. <laughs> like I felt like a crazy person. Like right, I was like, right. I was like, mm, 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 mm. and then like that night too, I couldn't sleep. Like my eyes were closed, but like I was still like dancing. Yeah, and you were happy. I was happy, but I was like, damn girl, you need to sleep. Like you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. go to bed. Like did did you feel like that when you took like you couldn't sleep? Um, there have been a, a couple times where you definitely stay up later than intended for me. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, but yeah. that's usually when I've taken it later in the night. Um, but the not sleeping, um, that only happens to me one time. And I don't necessarily, I think accidentally someone gave me molly quote unquote for my birthday and i took it uh randomly a uh, with someone and then i was like oh you know what i'm not <laughs> i'm i've taken molly before and i'm not a hundy p that this is what i was given so that was like the first and only time i've ne- i've ever taken molly not knowing directly where the source is coming from because sometimes they can cut it with speed um yeah and that would probably keep you awake but normally I can fall asleep after taking it except that one time that I wasn't you know you know <laughs> you get it <laughs> that one time where I don't know if it was the one time Molly. I failed the test <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you didn't fail the test because you knew you were experienced enough to know I don't think this is Molly in the moment I felt as though I was failing <laughs> yeah it felt like a big fat F on the corner of my term paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so maybe, I don't know. I don't think mine was cut with speed, but like, it, it was kind of weird. It was like, my brain wasn't off. Right. Like I could, like I was laying down and my eyes were closed, but I was still like hearing the music. Yeah. Probably because it was your first time and you just had so much, um, what is the word, the thing that it takes from you? Uh, dopamine? The, dopamine. I was looking for endorphins, and that's the wrong word because I'm out of dopamine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, dopamine. It, it, that was probably your first big dopamine dump. So yeah. That's probably why you just felt so much adrenaline. And it was a great day. Like, you had a lot of highs in the day, so. Yeah, and I think, I think also being at Izu is just, like, a lot anyways. I yeah. think even if I was sober, I still would have been hearing music. Yeah, it, yeah. You hear it no matter where you go. For We were there for like 12 hours. Oh my God. And did you get, to, and when you were on Molly, you probably weren't hungry, but did you guys eat, like get some chips or something in your system? Yeah, so we, we ate like once though. We ate like yeah. once, because you know, you're not hungry. But right. so what Izu did have too was, you know, because of a lot of kids overdosing, they had a bunch of like electrolytes packets. Mm. like on in the water stands they had these water stands where like you yourself you can get water yeah and it was just like basically like this just this water holes and you would just like pour your own water and they had like electrolyte stands because you know to keep yourself hydrated yeah of course of course so um why why would I why did I bring that up you got home you couldn't really sleep you were feeling the music right so I couldn't sleep so then the next day I was going to Newport so I, I went to Newport. I was feeling like a little bit dizzy, Uh huh. but it, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, oh, maybe I'm still, you know, high or whatever. Right. So in Newport, like I didn't do any Molly, but I did a lot of drinking. Right. Mm-hmm. So I did some eating, but I did a lot of drinking, a lot of dancing. Uh-huh. So we get to, it was like me and, and like four friends and we get to our hotel room and they had like a hotel bar too. We were yeah. going to like go to our hotel room and then come back downstairs. So like I'm in the shower and I'm like feeling like cold, mm-hmm. but like dizzy. I'm like, I don't understand this feeling. I'm like, I don't know what this is. Like, yeah, I, I'm it's, it was, it was super weird. So then we get, we go to the bar and 
I'm drinking and the more I'm drinking, I'm feeling more dizzy, right? Oh no. So I'm like, oh my God, like what's happening? At one point, Rocky, when we're leaving the room, I kind of like got the the tunnel, like when you're uh-huh. gonna faint, like yeah. I kind of got like the tunnel and I was like, oh my God, right? So we still go back to the bar, we're drinking. So I noticed that every time I take a sip though, I get more dizzy. So I'm like, let me fall back. Yeah, let me yeah. stop drinking. I don't know what's happening, but like, I'm like, let me stop drinking for a minute, right? So we stopped drinking. I'm like, I told my friend, I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna go like back upstairs. Like, I don't feel good. Like, right. you guys can chill. I don't feel good. So we go upstairs. So I go upstairs and I like gotta get in the shower because I'm like cold. You need a little, yeah. Yeah. So I get like in this hot shower and then I'm like, I, I, I don't know what told, I was like, you're dehydrated. Yeah. you've been you took molly and you probably didn't like you drank water but you didn't drink as Enough. much water yeah yeah because you're like you're like oh you know regular people were like oh three cups of water like we're doing great here yeah. like this is the most water i've drank so I, I honestly rocky i was like i'm overdosing i'm like i feel like a fucking crackhead yeah i'm like this is this is like bad so I don't know what reminded me though. I was like, oh, you're probably dehydrated. So I had to like go around and find Powerade, like at, like a like a like a crack, like a Powerade yeah, addict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like looking for Powerade in these vending machines. I bought I bought like four. And then I just like stayed in bed all day, like all night while my friends partied. And I was just like just dousing Powerade. My friend comes up. She's like, Are you good? I'm like, I was like, oh. So my friend comes. So my friend comes up. I, I love her. She's like, she's a nurse. Yeah. So she's like, she's she's like, I'm like, uh, uh, she comes up. I'm in the bed, uh-huh. and I'm shaking, and I'm like, I'm like, Wendy, I'm overdosing. <laughs> I'm overdosing. And she's like, she's like, let me feel. Like she was like, let me feel you. And she was like, you're not overdosing, you idiot. But maybe you shouldn't take drugs that you don't know how to take, you dumbass. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. She's giving so, you the tough love. Yeah. <laughs> so. So the whole time I'm like in bed, she's like, just drink Powerade. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Like you're not overdosing. Trust me. And so like, like, I I mean, you know, it's not funny to make fun of crackheads, but the whole, the whole time that she, she's like, you fucking crackhead, you fucking crackhead. And I don't know. That's not funny, but yeah. It's not funny, but you know, it's, it was, it was more of a term back in 2014. So yeah. Yeah. It was more of a like inauthentic to the story to say that she said something else. Right, exactly. And also like it's just like to it's like I'm someone who doesn't take drugs like that. Uh, so to her, she was like, Oh, I'm gonna rip you a new one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now That's you're nice. gonna fuck it. Yeah, now you're gonna fucking feel it. Cause she also doesn't do that. She doesn't do yeah. she just she she doesn't even smoke weed. She just sticks to to, to uh, liquor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, so then the next day I get up and I'm fine, but I am depressed for like three days. Yeah a little bit sad like I I don't I, I look I, I'm not like I don't like I, I'm not saying oh I loved Molly but it was pretty fun right yeah it's really fun it really is <laughs> but I don't think I would ever do it because of not even because of the dehydration but because of the depression afterwards yeah it's um it's like a big time low like you could see a commercial the day after doing molly and be like is this it is my life over like i'm i've never been this sad in my life and you're just streaming tears every little thing will make you cry because it does take all your dopamine and that's why you feel so great in the moment so there are like you know you can take 5-HTP kind of replenishes your dopamine and like there's some vitamins you can take so that is not as bad but that is right um, uh as they say in Clueless um a small price to pay to the party <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was but, it, it was like so depressing too because we're yeah. like driving back home and I'm like I feel like an angsty teenager right yeah, where yeah. like everything is like I'm looking at the co- out the car window. Everything is black and white. Like and nothing has like real color. I'm just like, what is my life? Yeah, like, you know, like it was just like it was it. It was weird. It was weird because it was like the total opposite of the drug happens afterwards. Yes, it's a big spectrum. That's why I um 
lately, as I've gotten older, have leaned more towards mushrooms in, in a okay. party setting because if you can microdose mushrooms, it feels like microdosing mushrooms feels like having two to three drinks at the start of a party where you just maybe two two or three drinks and like a couple hits of weed that's the equivalent it's like I'm here to party I'm having a good time my inhibitions are low but I'm in control and there's no anxiety and then the next and you just feel happy you feel connected to people conversation flows really easily and you don't really feel the desire to drink on mushrooms so you don't like have this wild hangover the next day and then the next day you just feel like good and a, like kind of a better person so um that's why I uh never thought I would be like mushrooms over molly but honestly <laughs> uh honestly yeah that's I, that's a t-shirt mushrooms <laughs> over molly but I don't want to yeah. shit on molly because molly does bring a lot of good times but the come down there's no come down off microdosing mushrooms so uh you know what I mean people have got to live their own experience and and figure out things from themselves but that that story, like, that was one of those ones where I could feel it. Sometimes when people are telling me their stories, I get super invested and I can kind of, like, feel it in my chest where I'm just, like, yeah. waiting for the next beat. And that was one of those stories. That was, um, <laughs> I'm so glad you and your brother are okay. It sounds like, I mean, as I know from my school days with your brother, yeah. <laughs> he's going to listen to this and be like, this bitch. But, yeah. <laughs> but I, I could definitely feel like you were in good hands. So I'm glad that that story ended up um worked out well for you i hope the guy that overdosed at the concert we hope he's okay good vibes to him yeah from what we heard he was okay You're like okay, no one vibes. no yeah. one had passed away yeah um but that was truly a wild night story thank you so much yeah of course thank <laughs> you for having me no, i don't think absolutely. i've i don't think i fully told this story like in, in entirely even my overdose even my yeah. even my what I thought was overdose well that means that means like absolutely so much to me that you would feel comfortable <laughs> enough sharing it on my platform so I thank you and you you have your own platform I want to talk a little bit about you being a stand-up but tell us a little bit about your podcast that you co-host splitting hairs Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I would love to. Thank you. Uh, so I have a podcast called Splin Hairs, and it's with my good friend, Chris, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are totally completely different. Like he's a white straight man. I am a gay Spanish woman. And we, we love to argue about things and then fully realize that we're, we're we have the same point. Like we're yeah. talking about the same thing. But, and we are agreeing, but for some reason we are arguing. Very contrarian to each other, but you're mm -hmm. on the same page. It is such a uh, great relationship over the airwaves to hear. You guys banter really well. You make each other laugh really well. And you can tell there's like a lot of TLC in the relationship. But yes. So you, you do not, you do not, um, you don't take it easy on each other. It's really funny. And you're both <laughs> Tauruses. I'm a Taurus as yes. well. Oh, you're a Taurus? I yes. 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 April 29th. Yes. I am May 17th. He nice. is May 7th. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So I, I immediately, when I listened to, I listened to a few episodes, but when I listened to the first episode, I was like, okay, yeah, they're definitely Tauruses. And I don't even really do too much of that. Like, uh, blah, 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 they're this, they're that. I believe in it, but I don't do it too much. And But you feel Taurus energy. Yes, I, I was, yeah, we, we don't care either. Like, we are not yeah. like people who, but it, there is something about, uh, there is some truth to it. Like, we're special. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're a special people. <laughs> yeah. I honestly have never met a Taurus I don't like. Yeah. yeah. I think I can say the same. I can't really yeah. put my finger on a Taurus that I don't like. Um, and I hope to not meet one that I don't like. Yeah. But you it's guys have much. a, you started it in March, right? Or February? We started in March. Yeah, March, we started March. in March. Um, we were, because of quarantine and everything, yeah. we were trying to, we were like, okay, we need to come out of the gate swinging because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you're still trying to stay relevant. You're still trying to stay, because, um, you know, I mean, you're a you great host. Thank you're you. a great host as a podcast. So it's like, it's like, you know, you got to keep that fresh, you know, mm -hmm. because you yes. can lose it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris has also done improv. Um, and where did Chris do improv? Because I know I remember on one of your episodes, you were talking about how you auditioned for house teams and you got a yes. for house teams. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's an improv bitch. <laughs> Go off. And uh, where where were you doing improv and where was Chris doing improv? 
I did improv at the pit. Perfect. Perfect. Same yeah. here. Yeah. 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 And I, and, um, Chris did improv at UCB. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you enjoy it when you were at the pit? Yes, I did. I did. I did enjoy it. I, I think I try, I, and I think I do this in my life in general. Like, uh-huh. I think I try to go too fast, too hard. And then I get like discouraged. Right. You know, so, but I did the pit, to, the pit to me was great. I thought they had great teachers. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely amazing teachers. And it was hard. I, I, um, I think it was harder also not to be like gender, gender, but it, I think it was harder for women to get on house teams at the pit. Yes. Um, just an, in a numbers, in a numbers yeah. game, it was harder for us. And I remember I auditioned, um, I think I started auditioning in 2000 end of 2012 and I didn't get on a team till January 2014 and it was by my third audition me and my friend Isabel we um, had auditioned to with each other every time and on our third audition we were like fuck it we went to this place around the corner we got tequila shots before the audition and we went in there like super confident yeah we got put on teams and then I was on a team from 2014 till uh, basically before the pandemic. So it was definitely my home base for a while. I'm wondering if we like crossed over at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you from the pit. Amazing. What team yes. were you on? So I didn't get on any house. Team. Oh, okay. So you were just auditioning kind of like in the yeah. mix of the bar area and everything. I, I auditioned twice. And then what it was for me was I, I moved to stand up uh-huh. just because stand up is more of a, of a uh individual game it is we're like I don't have to and I'm sure you know this you know I don't have to wait for this person that person this person to go and practice yes I can go to an open mic by myself yeah I can do a show by myself I don't have to depend on four other people to be available when I'm available right it is really hard scheduling conflicts with um booking rehearsals and then we all have to do this show at this time yeah one of the things and one of the reasons I do have so many stand-ups on my show is because I love stand-up comedy so much. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy talking about it. I enjoy dissecting it. I just, I'm obsessed with stand-up comedy. But for me, the thing that you guys do that I just um, don't have an interest in doing, and this is why I've not pursued stand-up, is you have to grind almost every night, five to six nights a week. You've got to bounce from this open mic to this open mic to this open mic and book this show and book this. I would just... um, I just don't want to do that. And I respect the people that do it so much. I, I really do. It's, um, yeah, that's your grad school as a stand up. Yeah. I mean that I, I respect you for being like, I don't want to do that. Right. Like, that's it. I, yeah. Like that's cause it, it is, it's, it's, I mean, I love it. Like I love stand up, but it's a disgusting world. Like you have to be, you, if you're, not busy it is not good for your career yeah it is not good you're not like if you're not out all at all hours of night that's not good like you're not doing well in your career so it even when you here's the thing about stand-up too that I didn't even realize even if you're not on a show you have to go and support other shows and network yes yes and and I thought it was going to be a very like oh you're funny I want to put you on my show but it goes beyond that it is yeah you're funny. I like you. I see you around. We click go, be on my show. Yeah. You know, like it's, it is, it is that. And I respect you a lot for being like, that's just not for Th- me. That's just my truth. Like I yeah. know. And when people are like, Oh, what does it take to make it as a stand up?" when they ask that question to stand ups and stuff, or like, or I've had a couple of people say to me like, you know, Oh, are you interested in doing stand up? Why don't you do stand up? I, I don't want to do that nighttime grind. And I know that that's the recipe for success and I watch the stand-ups who are making it and their careers are just like blossoming and blossoming and it's because of that grind that you guys do and I just I did that with improv for so long in a different capacity I gave so much of my life in my early 20s and my late 20s and even still doing improv yeah I um but I respect 
stand up so much and I love it and I'm obsessed with it. My dream in life is to just do this all the time and be like the the hanger honor at the, you know, upstairs <laughs> at the <laughs> cellar where they're like, oh, Rocky's here. She she can sit with us, but she, yeah. you know, I'm not doing a yeah. set. I'm just like hanging and laughing with everybody and like trying to hold my own roasting people. But uh, that that's my ultimate dream to be a fruit fly of, uh, around stand up. So. That can happen. <laughs> I There's, think so. That can happen. There's definitely like, I think comedians like even more people who are like, this is just not yeah. for me, but I like to hang out with you guys. Yeah. And like, and like you have a, you, you know, like I said earlier, like you're a great host. So I can see you being like, I'm not a stand up, but I have all, like, I have all these stand ups on my podcast all the yeah. time. You yeah, know, like yeah. I can definitely see that. I can see that. And definitely. like people, like I know people roast improvisers so much. Like it's like, oh, improv, but you have to be quick and you have to be funny to do improv for a long time. So I try yes. to hold my own like that. <laughs> And let me tell you, doing improv, people make fun of it, like stand, some stand-ups make fun of it, but doing improv helps you be, be a better stand-up. Yes, yes. So. A lot of good stand-ups have done improv. Absolutely. So comedy, yeah. comedy is comedy, but great comedy is great comedy. And to yeah. me, you are great comedy. I cannot you, wait I to see you. That. Of course, I cannot wait to see you do more live shows. Let everyone know what you have coming up and where they can find you and just, yeah, plug your stuff. Yeah, you can definitely follow me at Ashlyn Salzano on Instagram. I'll be putting up shows there. Any show I get on, I post there. I post on my story. Come by, hit me up, and I'll meet you. I'll meet you there. Like I, <laughs> I'm cool. Like I'm cool. I'm not like some standoff asshole stand up. You know. Um, yeah, you can find me Ashlyn Salzano. Listen to my podcast. You can also watch us on YouTube, Splitting Hairs. Uh, now we have guests on our show, like every once in a while. And we talk about like conspiracy theories nice. and so an apocalypse. So if you're into that, yeah, give us a listen. Perfect. Ashlyn, this was an absolute pleasure. My cheeks hurt, <laughs> which is always a good sign of a great episode. And, uh, everybody follow Ashlyn. If you can see her in the city, please go see her in the city. And Ashlyn, we will talk soon. Yes, talk to you soon. Thank Absolutely. you so much for having me. Thank you so much for doing the show. Bye, Ashley. <laughs>